when you are a paleo anthropologist or anthropologist in general, what you're trying to do is to try to understand and answer the question, what makes us human? And in the following few minutes, I'll try to show you the characters that we try to identify or explain when we try to understand what makes us human. Of course, as you all know, we are first our looks. So if you have this various types of people in the planet Earth, on the planet Earth today, yes, they differ in some aspects, but they belong to the species Homo sapiens, as you know. And one of the key elements of what makes us human is the way we look. And to me, everybody on the slide looks exactly the same. I cannot see the differences because I look into the bones, not the outside part of the, the faces. If you went into the body and examined the cells, you see that Homo sapiens, or everybody here in the planet, are characterized by some code, the genes, the DNA. We share, of course, a DNA heritage with many other animals in the planet, but we specifically share an overwhelming amount of DNA material with the chimpanzees. When you do the DNA analysis of Homo sapiens and the, the chimps, you see that over 98% of the same genetic material is shared. And that is the case because we share a common ancestor sometime around six to seven million years ago. So in addition to the way we look like, our genes are another important attribute when we try to define what makes us human. So even though, of course, we belong to the animal world, we specifically are coded. Of course, the code is the DNA, and that distinguishes us from other animals. But mind you, when I say distinguish us, it's just a fraction of that DNA. Over 98%, for example, is shared with the uh, champions. Another important attribute when you try to understand what makes us human, of course, in addition to the face, the way we look, in addition to our genes that are inside, are our behaviors. And these behaviors could be intuitive behaviors such as this one. Look at this, the gorilla feeding its baby, and we do it also. But behavior for homo sapiens, or for us, goes beyond the intuitive behaviors that we know, such as this one. <laughs> Around 2.6 million years ago, our ancestors invented these stone tools. And as you know, we today have rockets, computers, big amphitheaters, etc. So all these computers, this all scientific advancement that we have today is a simple continuation in time of this invention that was made 2.6 million years ago. And the fact that we have this unique behaviors is also one way of defining us as humans in addition to the genes and in addition to the way we look like. <coughs> and of course, all that, I told you the brain controls language, the symbolic nature, our behavior, etc. And as you sit down and just hear, a lot is happening inside your brain. Homo sapiens have a very big, very large brain compared to their body size. And the fact that we have this big brain enables us to <coughs> somehow be different from other animals. But of course, I should underline when I say different, I'm only talking about the differences but we are different from other animals because in the first place we are the same. As I told you, when you do the DNA analysis of chimpanzees and humans, 
only 2% differs, 98% is the same. But of course, when you characterize differences, you have to show how things are different. So this gray matter, this brain, is not only large in humans, but it's very powerful. Very powerful that it can do this, save lives, or do this. So, in a way, the future of humanity lies somewhere around here. And we have to be careful on how we understand ourselves and our brain and how we use it. Having said this, <coughs> I would like to come to one attribute in addition to the facial morphology, or anatomy you have, the genes, the behavior, the language, the brain that distinguishes from other primates, we have one important attribute when we try to define what makes us human, and that is the anatomy of our skeleton. This is a reconstruction of a species called Australopithecus afrancis, which is a Lucy species. <coughs> and when you look at the skeleton, when you do detailed analysis, you can very easily tell that these individuals were upright walking uh, species. They were bipedal, like, like this. They, were walking, they were walking on two legs. And here, is a, an infant human skull, here is an infant chimpanzee skull, skull, and here is Salam, the discovery that I will be talking about today. And you can clearly see that this individual is closely related to this one, I will, I will tell you why later, but the fact that we have a unique set of anatomical features or characters is one way to define us as humans. But what is very unique about this type of attribute or evidence is that that is the only attribute that makes, us, makes it into the fossil record. I told you about language is important attribute of humanness, but it doesn't fossilize. It doesn't go to the fossil record. The brain, it decays. It doesn't go to the fossil record. The behavior, of course, cannot preserve in the fossil record. So the fact that we have this important attribute, the skeleton, the bones, fossilizing and then being preserved in the sedimentary context, enables us not only to talk about what makes us human, but also about what made us human, because thanks to these bones, we can travel back in time and see how the different stages of development happen through time. Remember earlier I told you the genes, the DNA is one important attribute that we have, but the <coughs> thing with the DNA is that it tells you that we diverged from the chimpanzees sometime around 7 million years ago, so it gives you the starting point, and then it gives you the end, that today we are closely related, telling you nothing about here. So when you go out to the field like me and many of my colleagues, what we try to do is to find the fossils and then try to establish the different stages of development through time. And when you do that, you can see clearly that things were indeed changing through time, from six to seven million years all the way up to today. And what you have here is the brain is expanding through time. You have a larger and larger and larger skull. That the face is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Compare this face with this face. And also, you don't see them here, but the teeth are becoming smaller and smaller through time. So this clearly helps us to tell a story, which is a story of everybody in the planet, over six billion people. 